Hi and welcome to reswitch.com. Today we're going to be having a little look at uh, the remake of my lightsaber tutorial. And uh, the point of this tutorial is to achieve a couple of things. Firstly and obviously to show you how to make good looking lightsabers. And to show you a good method of making good looking lightsabers. And also to show you exactly how I go about making my lightsabers, the particular work through. Also, to combine um, two popular methods into that, which is uh, the Ryan Weaver method and a method that uh, Master Zap came up with from the Force.net, uh, which are really useful and make the whole process uh, nice and streamlined and quite smooth and, you know, just really good to use uh, with a few little tricks thrown in. And also, I will give you the end result as is a replication of the colors, particularly the blue, for um, the popular flick RVB, which I've been asked many times before on how to uh, come up with. And this is a clip I made myself that you can see here. And uh, I made this years back, but um, it's still pretty nice and I like it and uh, I get a lot of questions on it so we're going to be going for this sort of look and uh, I've got my RBB footage right here so uh, let's get going all right let's delete this up actually and show you from scratch I'm gonna be taking this tutorial as if for a complete beginner since it's uh, quite common for people who have never used After Effects at all to come in and want to do lightsabers as their first project so assuming that you've imported your footage from here. Um, you might go about sort of creating your new composition and setting up all your numbers, but this is unnecessary. You can take your footage and drag it down onto the little composition button and it will be set up perfectly for you. In the timeline, everything will be nice. It'll be the right settings uh, for the right footage. So, down here in our timeline, duplicate your footage layer and set the top one to screen. Now what we're going to be doing is treating uh, this bottom one here kind of as our white solid layer if you've ever followed the uh, Ryan Weber tutorial before. And we're going to be rotoscoping on this layer. This top here, one here, that is, we're going to be uh, getting rid of it eventually. It's going to be acting primarily as a reference for our rotoscoping. So double click on your bottom one that we're going to be rotoscoping on and you'll get up a footage window here which is docked alongside your composition window and these are slightly different and um, I'm just going to bring us along to a nice frame to uh, illustrate. Here we go, this is pretty good. So this is the frame we're going to be looking at and I'll show you how to do all the frames so don't worry about that. And the first thing we want to do is essentially start masking our lightsaber cores but first let's uh, just hit Control y get a new black solid layer make it comp size and just put it below uh, for the sake of keeping everything tidy and on this uh, layer here get out your pen tool which will be acting as our mask and let's draw on our first saber core now we use six point masks to uh, be able to give us our curve on the end of our savers. Uh, uncheck render and we'll keep the filter on masks. Press V to get your selection tool up and uh, hold down space bar, cl space bar, click and drag to be able to just move around your screen like this. Very easy way of being able to get around. When you release space bar it'll flick back to whatever tool you were previously on as such our selection tool. Click off and uh, drag these guys around. Let's move around. I'm zooming in with the mouse wheel move these guys into position. Now we're going to be setting up uh, Bezier curves on the ends, on these middle points here for our savers to curve off the ends. It doesn't matter particularly for this particular uh, shot here but it will when our blade is in full picture and it's curving off. So um, hold down on your pen tool and go down to convert vertex tool and then go back to your selection tool V and hold down control and you'll see that uh, our Convert Vertex Tool icon appears and click and you can see 
that turns into a little curve there, and do the same down here. So now we've got a nice looking core for now. Just tidy this up a little. And I'm going to first go and illustrate kind of how you would go about um, doing this for every frame because you do have to do it for pretty much every frame. And um, the point being that it's better to do your uh, actual masking first before you get on to doing adding the colors and so on. So if you uh, hit control and the right arrow key or control and the left arrow key to shift through frames or page up and page down. And you'll see that we're moving a frame forward or backwards and um, what uh, you'll notice is that our mask is staying where it is. So what we actually need to do to be able to move our mask in between frames is come down into our uh, footage properties, open up mask properties and hit the stopwatch, stopwatch next to mask shape to set keyframes for our uh, saber core mask. And so now when I go forward a frame, you'll see that uh, the color on the mask darkens and it means that there's no keyframe on this frame so that we can now actually move our mask and set it to where it'll be. But I'm just going to illustrate something a little different. I'm going to go forward another couple of frames like so. And um, now we're about four frames ahead. Zoom in a little bit here. And that's, I'll just show you, if you just drag out one of these little guys along here, you can actually, uh, and holding down shift, align it to where you are and so that when you're moving about in the footage you can flick right back to this point at any time you like. Useful little tool. And now that we're in the footage window I can marquee select this group of uh, mask points up here which you could not do back in the composition window you just end up dragging your footage around and it would all go really badly wrong. That's the point of this whole footage window idea. And just drag these over and do the same for these bottom guys down here and drag these up too, okay? And uh, so now, as you remember, I'm a couple of frames ahead. So if I go back a few frames, you can see that After Effects, here's the original frame we made, forward, forward, forward. Here's the next frame we made. After Effects has interpolated the in-between frames itself. It's had a good guess at where they should be. You know, it's not quite right, but it's not, not a bad guess. So it means that basically all you have to do is go back and make small tweaks rather than massive tweaks and so it's a useful time-saving tool and it's more than that because there will be points when the saber is supposed to be steady and not moving somebody standing still and when you're masking every frame yourself you tend to come up with these very slight small erratic movements but they're really noticeable in the final render so when you use this method and you let AE automatically interpolate the in-between frames itself it comes up with something smooth so if you did it for every four frames on a very still saber it would look much stiller or much smoother of a movement than you would otherwise get so now i've got a couple of frames masked there and uh, that's how you go about doing that and that's pretty much what you've got to do for your whole clip your whole footage okay so if I just close this window up here, and next, okay, still on our footage here, the bottom one, go for your fill, and we want a fill of white for our core, and you'll see that because we're still in the footage window, our filter has flicked over to fill, so our mask has disappeared. If I rendered this, you'd see this is our core, but just flick your filter back to masks. And you can carry on rotoscoping throughout your footage, even with the core filled in. You go back to the actual composition, though, you can see here our core has been drawn. Okay, and uh, while we're at it, we'd better name this composition. Uh, we'll call it cores. So, from this point, I'd say it's a pretty good idea to give this core a feather of one. And you just see it just gives takes off some of the sharp edge. And the next thing to do, okay, come to the layer, create a new adjustment layer, and put that down just above your footage. And what we want to do with this is uh, all Ryan Weaver kind of method. Add a fast blur. 